but close study of the pictures seems to show the leak coming from the top of the tank. The slipstream carried the gas towards the engine where it ignited. Then there were almost simultaneous explosions beneath the shuttle vehicle itself and at the top of the tank as if that was the source of the gas. Within seconds the tank was engulfed in flames and the fuel exploded. The shuttle vehicle itself disintegrated. The solid rockets veered off. The external tank supplies the fuel for the shuttle's three main engines. Liquid hydrogen is stored in the lower two-thirds of the tank, 100 tonnes of it, nearly 400,000 gallons. The top third of the tank is where the liquid oxygen is stored. That weighs over 600 tonnes, nearly 150,000 gallons of it. During launch, the hydrogen and oxygen are pumped at the rate of 1,000 gallons a second through 17-inch pipes into the main combustion chamber of the engines. Such is the stored energy in this tank that if something goes drastically wrong as it did today, nothing can save the shuttle. It's the world's worst space disaster by far, but not the only one. In January 1967, astronauts Grissom, White and Chaffee were burned to death on the ground in their Apollo capsule. An electrical arc had sparked an oxygen fire. In April 1967, a Russian cosmonaut, Vladimir Komarov, died when his spacecraft's parachute became snagged before landing. In June 71, three Russian cosmonauts were killed when they re-entered the atmosphere on Soyuz 11. The shuttle program has been plagued with problems. It was years late. Some engineers claimed not enough money was spent during the development stage, and that contributed to the many minor hiccups. There were problems with the heat-resistant tiles, meant to protect the shuttle on re-entry. Launches were delayed with computer problems. In 1983, a solid rocket engine nozzle nearly burnt through. That would have been a disaster. Last year, one mission ended in a lower orbit than expected, when a main engine shut down too early. But nothing prepared NASA for today's catastrophe. Despite what President Reagan has said, the future of the shuttle program as we know it must now be in serious doubt. For years, many have argued that you don't need men in space. Most jobs can be done by unmanned rockets. Astronauts have been used to repair satellites in space, some will now ask whether the risks are too great to allow for this luxury. I didn't personally know any of the seven people involved in the flight, except as human beings. I'd like to raise the obvious question which has been trickling around in my mind as I hear the speeches here. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? There were to have been 15 shuttle missions this year, but the shuttle will now be grounded possibly for many months while the technical inquest goes on. Scores of satellites, including important military ones, will have their launch delayed. The space telescope won't get into orbit this year. And an important mission to Jupiter won't be launched. Aerospace manufacturers, including British Aerospace, which make satellites, will be affected. Demand for unmanned satellite launches will soar. Even if they find the reason for the tragedy, today's disaster will mean that in future, none but the bravest will venture into space again. James Wilkinson. For all its problems, until today, the shuttle program had been regarded as a success story. The idea of the reusable spacecraft was a leap forward in technology. It also put the United States well ahead of the Soviet Union in the space race because it opened the way for a huge expansion in the commercial exploitation of space. The Space Shuttle's first flight nearly five years ago was a spectacular achievement in man's long quest to conquer space. It was a triumph to invent a spaceship which could be used up to a hundred times. The shuttle seemed to go up so often and so successfully that most of us hardly bothered to think about it. But there were problems. Nearly every mission was dogged by frustrating technical delays and indeed two technicians were killed on the ground before the first launch. But overall, there was no doubt that the space shuttle would dominate the development of space flight in the West for the rest of this century. Welcome to the Ace Satellite Repair Company. We pick up, repair, and deliver. Manned space flight epitomized the American dream. It summed up America's pioneering spirit and technical know-how. 
President Reagan was the loudest cheerleader for his astronauts' exploits in space. The feats of Daring Do included rescuing and repairing broken satellites at 17 and a half thousand miles an hour. The shuttle space lab led to scientific breakthroughs. In the future, the weightless, germ-free environment of the spaceship could be used to manufacture drugs such as interferon and insulin. The space shuttle helped satisfy man's cosmic wanderlust, but not everyone was impressed. Some critics said it was foolish and unnecessary to put men into space. They argued that people were going up and down simply for the sake of it, and that unmanned flight would have been cheaper and just as rewarding. Today's tragedy will provoke much soul-searching, but there's little doubt that when it's all over, there'll be more men and women queuing up for the next flight into space. Touchdown. The British Space Society has been holding its annual dinner in London tonight. It's a long-standing event, and it's been completely overshadowed by this afternoon's shuttle disaster. Many of Britain's leading authorities on space exploration are there, and Mike Mackay has been talking to them. Seventy members of the Space Society were gathering at the Cafe Royal tonight when word came of the Challenger explosion. The guests were stunned by the news. The society, formed two years ago, brings together representatives of dozens of companies involved in European space projects, not least the Ariana satellite launching program. Before starting their bi-monthly dinner, some of the guests spoke of their reaction to the Challenger disaster. Uh, launch vehicles, whether they are expendable, unmanned launch vehicles like Ariane or reusable vehicles like the shuttle, are prone to failure. Everybody recognises that the shuttle is a very reliable vehicle. It has many fail-safe features. And what we've seen today is a failure of the shuttle, which is not fail-safe, but nevertheless is inevitable. We don't know yet the exact cause of this uh, disaster. And we are first to identify the exact reason. And when it is known, then it will be possible to see exact, the exact consequences of such a, a failure. But I think that the whole orbit of flight will be grounded for a month. I'm afraid that uh, this is a price to be paid uh, for a manned uh, launcher, of, of course, uh, an unmanned launcher for launching communication satellites uh, uh, doesn't present the same problems. Before dinner, the chairman called on society members to observe a minute's silence for the seven who'd lost their lives in the Florida accident. The shock of today's disaster has also been felt in the Soviet Union, America's great competitor in space. Film of the explosion was shown in full on Soviet television less than two hours after it happened. In the United States, people are waiting to hear what President Reagan is going to say. He's due to broadcast on television later this evening. Messages of sympathy have been arriving at the White House from all over the world. Mrs. Thatcher was one of the first to send her condolences in a private message to Mr. Reagan. The two British servicemen who were due to take part in the shuttle program tonight said they were devastated by the disaster. Squadron leader Nigel Wood was set to be the first British man in space on board the shuttle in June, and Lieutenant Colonel Richard Farrimond was also due to fly to Houston later this week Reported. to start President training. Reagan is going on television in America in a few hours' time to talk to the nation about today's disaster. Newsnight will have full coverage of the statement and today's other developments on BBC Two at 10 to 11. The destruction of the Challenger is a disaster which has shocked the United States. The explosion on the spacecraft happened just over a minute into the flight when it was nine miles high. The shuttle was blown into pieces. All seven of those on board must have died instantly. One of them was a teacher, the first American civilian to go into space. She'd said she wanted to take the mystery out of space so that her pupils could understand it better. Good night.